Hey everybody, before we start the deck profile, we're real quickly gonna talk about 50 cards. 50 cards is my personal favorite place to shop for nation splits. So what nation splits are is where you can pick up full play sets of whatever you need for a specific nation, making it way easier to update your deck. So be sure to check them out for splits, singles, deck boxes, play mats, sleeves, whatever you need for Vanguard, 50 cards has it. And you can get an additional 5% off when you use code Nexus as well. And with that, let's just go ahead and go into the deck profile. So going into the deck profile, we got our 50 card deck, our four card ride deck and our eight card G zone. So let's just go ahead and start with the ride deck. Keep it consistent here. We got our Madoi, which is the starter that comes with our premium deck set. So that's the same ones before. We have Shizu, which comes in the deck set, and when you write on top of Madoi, you get your crest. So real quick, I'll just show it the crest right here. So the crest says that you can perform stride, you can only ride Obero, Obero, your Obero units or anything with Demon Stealth Dragon become 13k base. So all your front row units get 5k for each face of card in your G zone. And the last skill is during your turn, your opponent's units by, uh, placed by your card's abilities, their dominated units lose their continuous and auto abilities and they get an additional 5k. So it's just making it easier so that every dominated unit is gonna get an additional 5k just to add a little more power, which is cool. but you cannot use their abilities when you dominate those units. So that's just the crest for you. Then for grade twos, we got the Shudj Doji because this is still legal as of right now. So taking full advantage of this, it lets you look at the top five for cards with stealth in their name. And it allows you to look for two from the top five, put one to soul, call the other. So filling soul is really important to this deck. So this is just a really, really good card for that advantage, so you're only really doing it for that card effect. I believe that we're, we may get that restriction soon where you have to go back and use the grade two that came with the stride deck set. If that is the case, I'll make it updated profile later. But for now, Shoj Doji. And of course, Obero, because it's the, the star of the deck here. Obero has the beginning of the right phase skill where you can choose a card from your opponent's drop and call it to rear. That's in case they have no rear guards to dominate. At least you can, you know, bully them from their drop zone. And then at the end of the turn, that unit is retired. Then the dominate skill is when your unit strides, you can choose one of your opponent's rear guards, stand it, then dominate it. And until the end of the turn, it gets 4K and attacks your opponent's uh, other unit. So it's nice that that unit keeps the 4K for the turn. When you keep dominating it, it's gonna get 9K total every time it attacks. And it's the exact same skill as the OG Obero. If you have old Oberos, you're allowed to use those um, in that artwork for this deck because it's the exact same skill. Fun fact. So that's it for the right line. I'm just gonna go ahead and move those over here and we'll go ahead and get started with the main deck. So starting off, we do have some grade fours because we do have G units that are grade four. So we got two copies of Asperia. You don't use this for the overdress. You use it for the second ability, which is once per turn when your Vanguard attacks. So bless one, stand this unit, gets 5K for each original dress, but it won't get the power from that, but it'll get the power from the crest. So it's still an additional attack. So swing, Vanguard attack, so plus one, restand. I'm running two copies. You can run around two to three, but I like two. This recently got reprinted in the triple drive booster as well. If you're looking for copies of this, I believe they're a little bit cheaper now. So it's still really good for this deck since we have grade four Vanguards. Then we have two copies of Obero. This is because for the stride cost for Mukuro, uh, you have to discard Obero when you stride into Mukuro. You know, we got two copies and they're also searchable. So makes it easier. Then we have three copies of Bloivris, the Blo Bliovris. This is a fun card because you can discard it to ride into Obero and you can draw. You could also discard it when you perform stride and draw. And then if you have Spiriata in hand, you can put this into your guard circle, reveal Spiriata, and this gets 15 shield. So. Also, if you call it, it gets five and you can retire an opponent's rear guard. So there's a lot of versatility with this card and I like it a lot. So that's why I'm running it. I'm only running three just because I don't have three Espiriata to go into. I would be running four of this if I was, but for now we're just doing three and two. I am running the one copy of Stealth Dragon Shiranui. This is similar to this where you can discard it when you perform stride to draw a card. But I do like that it has the GB2 for the extra 10K, which is nice. So that is one of the reasons why I am running this is just for that extra bit of power, just in case if I don't have any aggressive rear guards, I can at least throw this down as a big old beat stick. So it's nice. I'm mostly using it for discard fodder though. Lastly for grade threes, pretty good staple for standard right now, Bracing Ladder Angel. This is mostly for the mirror match. It's you put this in your soul, you draw a card, and until the end of your opponent's next turn, all of your vanguards get 5K, or during your turn, all of your vanguards get 5K, and then all of your rear guards cannot be chosen 
and cannot be put other than rear by your opponent's card effects. So it prevents your rear guards from being dominated at least for one turn. It's really helpful for you know, those potential turns when you know your opponent's gonna go into their kill turn and they can't dominate you and then next turn you dominate them and you win. Bracing Ladder Angel is really good and it feeds soul and draws a card. So it's good regardless. Then I got four copies of Full Rai. Four Rai came in this premium stride deck set. This is just a really, really good card. It gets 5k every time you dominate something and when you Vanguard attacks, you use Soul Blast 1. If a unit was dominated and attacked this turn, you could Soul Blast 1 and stand this unit. So it's just a huge beat stick. It gets bigger and bigger as you dominate and as you flip cards face up in your G zone. Foray is like the really big beater in this deck. Then I'm running three copies of Sekai. I dropped it down to three. This uh, deck set came with four. So if you have the room or you're able to find the room, you can keep it up at the four. That's totally up to you. But what it does, it's similar to Sekai in that it restands. So when your Vanguard attacks, if a Unit was dominated by you, attack this turn, you can Soul Blast 1, stand this unit. Then, if your G-Zone has two or more face-up cards in your G-Zone, you can draw a card and then this gets 10k. This is nice because obviously it lets you draw a card, which is like kind of dumb, but it's, you know, a restander and, you know, you might as well have a full front row of restanders. So you got Spiriata, you got Sekai, and then, or Furai, and then you got Sekai. So got a lot of restanders in this deck. Then we got four of a really, really good card, which is... Isausu or yeah, Isausu, I think I'm pronouncing that right. So you only use this for the Shoji Doji turn two. So when placed on rear, if you have Vanguard Shoji Doji, Kamas one, look at top five, look for a stealth card, normal unit, and put it in your hand, shuffle your deck. So this is actually pretty reasonably able, you're reasonably able to find this card just because you can have Shoji Doji skill to look at the top five. You maybe see this card, you call it, and then you kind of blast to get more resource out of it, which is nice. Or if it's in your hand, good, great. If you don't end up seeing this card all game for whatever reason, I think it's still fine to still pitch it for fodder, or if you just need like a beat stick, just throw it down a shield. You get so much value out of this deck in general that I feel like running four copies of this card does not hurt the deck at all. If anything, it's just pure benefit. So this card is great. If Shoji Doji does get hit, obviously, or you can't run it in this deck, this card has absolutely no value. So keep an eye out for that. If Shoji Doji ends up leaving the deck, don't run this card and we'll figure out what the update's gonna be. So we'll stay tuned for that and see if that happens for English. Last for grade twos, I'm running two copies of Defense War. Defense War is a blitz order that allows you to give one of your guardians that does not have Sentinel an additional 10k shield and when it would be retired from the guard circle you could put it back into your hand instead so or when it is retired so the minute it hits the drop zone it just goes back to your hand which is nice the reason i like this card is because you're able to bounce cards like Bloivorous. you can guard with it and then you can put it back in your hand to discard for stride later or if there's a really key card you need for your or if there's a really key card you need for your stride turn you can just bounce it back and then you're good to go i really like this card a lot so I did make some adjustments to put this card in the deck. If you don't happen to have this, because I obviously didn't come in the stride deck set, you can make adjustments easily. You know, it's not a needed card, but I'd really, really like the benefit of it. It's a lot of fun. So now we're getting into the grade ones. A Shenry, or Shenry, yeah, that's how you pronounce that name. It is a really, really good grade one. This is a promo that came as a box topper for the triple booster. Uh, when it boosts, if your opponent has one or less rear guards, or if you played in order this turn, this gets 5K to the end of battle, and you can then you can put this in your soul and draw a card. So. I like this card a lot just because your opponent having one rear guard is really easy to do, especially if your opponent only has one, only has two things on the board, and then you go into a Mugen Tenbu, and then you retire one of those things, only have one thing on the board, then you boost with it, easy. You know, you met the condition. If your opponent does have a full board, you could still at least have access to Bracing Ladder if you're lucky on those turns and still get full advantage of those early or late in the game. But this is a really, really good early game card. So if you find this with Shoji Doji, or you find this with Izausu. You can throw it down. Your opponent usually only has one rear guard during those turns anyway. Throw a bunch of these down if you can manage and draw cards and fill your soul. So this is a huge, huge win for uh, Dragon Empire in general, but specifically stealth decks. Then I'm running three copies of Tenri. Tenri is a really good card for filling your hand. So what it does is when it's placed, if you have an overall crest, you can count plus one, draw a card. Then when a dominated unit attack hits, you can return this to your hand. So since dominate only takes place during the main phase, you're able to call, dominate, but hit, cool, bounce. Call, kind blast, draw again, dominate again, but hit, cool, bounce, call it again. If you're gonna be using that many counter blasts, but it's still nice to the fact that if it's on the board, you can bounce it back and you're able to call it again just to get advantage of free hand. So this card is really good in my opinion. Then I got two copies of Katariga Tsune. So this is the card that helps you search for Obero. It also counts as Strife Fodder, kind of 
obvious there. You're just using it so you can set up for your Mukuro turns. Then we got three stealth PGs. These are searchable with so Shoji Doji and Izasu, or actually not really searchable with Shoji Doji because it'll just end up on your board or soul. But if you find this with these out, so cool, you got a PG in your hand, which is nice. So, and they came in the deck set, so gotta match the uh, Nubatama aesthetic. One Elementary, because uh, everyone needs it at this point. And then now we're getting into triggers. So starting off, we got our over trigger, you know, Drag Veda. This might also get hit coming soon, so there might be a choice restriction between Mukro and Drag Veda. So keep an eye out for that as well. But what this does is it allows you to restand your Vanguard when you drive check it give something 100 mil. If you happen to drive check this when you are using Mukro's skill to dominate your opponent's vanguard, you are allowed to restand your opponent's vanguard. And since it is still in the dominated state when it restands, if there is another target to attack, you can force your opponent's vanguard to attack a second time, allowing you to get a second twin drive for a total of seven drive checks that turn. So that is the reason why Drag Veda and Mukro are choice restricted in Japan, but we will see what happens in English for now. The card is legal. For Burning Flail, which is our crit with the skill, so it allows you to put it into the soul to give something 2k, so it doesn't hurt, you know, to have cards that help you fill your soul. And we got four more vanilla crits, just because they came with the start deck set and it matches with the aesthetic. Three copies of Parama, which is the front trigger with the skill, so this is the one where it gets 5k shield if your opponent's at grade three, and also fronts because you're gonna have a front row with a bunch of restanders, so might as well give that front row big old buff of power. And then we got the uh, stealth heal trigger that came in the stride deck set. So we're gonna run full play set of that as well. So that is it for the main deck. Now we're just gonna get into the G zone in just a bit. Just gotta clean this up. So then for the G zone, I'm gonna put them over here. We got our four Mugen Tembus. So Mugen Tembu is your first stride. It's also the one that's helping you fuel your G-Zone, keep them flip, flip face up. Act, dominate, counter blast one, turn a G unit face up. Choose one of your opponent's regards, stand it, dominate it, and it can attack one of your opponent's other units. And then you retire that dominated unit at the end of the battle. It allows you to get another dominate, your regards are getting an additional power, and that's just an extra attack the opponent has to deal with. And you just keep kind of doing this every single turn as you can. So just flip something, dominate, flip something, dominate. And then when you're ready, go into Mukuro for those extra attacks and go for game. So Mugen Tembu is like, I think arguably the best G unit to keep striding into over and over and over again, if you can, because it's just kind of free advantage for the fact that you're flipping your G zone up and getting a lot of power out of that. Then we got R for Mukuro. So Shiranui Mukuro, uh, this is the card that allows you to dominate your opponent's Vanguard. So you have to discard Obero for the stride cost and then you Soul Blast one. Choose when your opponent's regards, dominate it, and it attacks your opponent's vanguard. And then at the end of that battle, you stand your opponent's vanguard and it attacks one of your opponent's regards. And then you are able to perform twin drive by dominating your opponent's vanguard. So you're able to get a lot of attacks out of this deck and you're able to kind of abuse your opponent's field against them, which is nice. So multi-attacking, you're able to get anywhere between like seven, eight or more attacks with this deck. And they're all getting like plus 10 to 15 to 20K depending every turn. And as the game goes on and on and on, those numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger. So this deck is obviously dominating the meta for obvious reasons here. I do believe this deck does need a hit pretty bad. So we're things to look out for is obviously the Drag Veda and Mukuro hit. The Shoujo Doji cards are probably gonna get limited, uh, specifically for Shiranui, so those will go away and hopefully kind of nerf the deck. And then also the Divines meta and all the new cards coming out will also hopefully kind of stagger things, make things a little more balanced. But that's pretty much it for me. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.